Hello everybody and welcome back, my name is Veloster Gaming, and as we mentioned in the last episode of this Derby County save, today's going to be more of a, a slower look at the squad, the club in general, and just things in general that I probably should have done last episode, but I kind of really wanted to start the episode and get into a game and see how we do and try out our new tactic, but I decided this episode would be more about taking a slower look and just looking around the club, what we're expecting this season, what we're going to try and do this season, etc, etc. So I thought I'd start with this screen, which gives you some, some idea about the club in general. As you see, legends include Steve Bloober and Brian Clough, of course. All sorts of players here. I, I'm sure people recognise them more than I do, but likes of Peter Taylor, Peter Shilton, Peter, bleh, Peter Shilton Colin Todd, etc. Dave Mackay as, as well. So many really famous players in there, especially from the sort of Brian Clough, Peter Taylor era. Uh, our main rivals are Nottingham Forest, Leicester and Leeds. I'm sure a lot of people knew about that. Leeds mainly to do with, I believe, the Brian Clough situation. Someone might prove me wrong about that, but it says historic rather than local, so I'm presuming that's more what it's about. Our captain for this season will be Richard Keogh, and Chris Martin will be our vice-captain. We've got a determined squad personality, and we are, of course, a professional club, so a determined squad personality is a good start. We're expected to finish fourth, and as you saw last episode, we actually managed to start with a win against Bolton. So these are the sort of squads we're these are the sort of teams we're going to be facing this uh, this save and our our ambition mainly is to get sort of playoffs maybe promotion but definitely minimum expectation is playoffs so that's what I'm going to be aiming for I'm going to try and basically do better than Derby did is essentially what I'm trying to do um, so we'll see how that goes but we'll look through the squad now in a more in depth look so we'll go to we'll get the assistance reports up while we look through so our goalkeepers are Lee Grant and Scott Carson and you see they've actually got identical um, uh, current ability and potential ability of course but if we compare the two you see they're very similar types of goalkeepers arguably Lee Grant actually a little bit better uh, in some areas maybe physically Scott Carson is better because he's a bit younger I mean he's got a lot better strength actually <laughs> physically a lot better than Lee Grant but Lee Grant seems to have a bit more technical about him and a bit more mental uh, attributes in his advantage. He's also taller. Don't know if that makes a difference, but I just thought I'd point that out. I believe Lee Grant has been their first choice this season. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. I've not. I don't follow Derby too closely, but I, I believe he's been quite an important player. We've also got Danny Ward, as I mentioned last episode. We we had a quick look at his profile, so we're not going to talk about him. Uh, we'll start with. Hang on, we'll do best position. There we go. Oh, we'll start with our right backs, which are Chris Baird and Isaac. Isaac. We're going to call him Isaac. I was going to try and pronounce that, but I don't want to offend anyone. So again, we'll have, have a quick comparison of them. Chris Baird, obviously a very experienced player. He used to play for Fulham. A lot of people will know him from that. I believe he also, he's also played for the likes of... Actually, has he played for Fulham? I better... quick. Yeah, okay, he did play for Fulham for quite a long time. He's kind of jumped around clubs since then, but not really found a home. So hoping he can be here for the long term. So we're going to compare him to Isaac, as you see, a lot better than Isaac is at the moment. But Isaac's a lot younger, so he's got a lot of potential. As you see, the physical advantage goes to the younger lad, but mentally, Chris Baird looks really good. And technically as well, he's still really strong, which is good to see. So we're hoping he can help develop um, Isaac, who's actually Swedish, which I didn't quite realise before. But I, th I think he's a dual nationality. We might double check that. Maybe I'm just being quite offensive here. No, he was. Uh, he's also Ugandan. So those are our right backs. We're pretty strong in the right back area in terms of our first choice. Maybe we could have done with a better right, uh, right back uh, backup option, but we might look at that kind of in January now. I mean, we've still got time in the transfer window to find someone, but I'm not quite sure whether we need particularly need anyone. So in terms of left back, we have the very experienced Stephen Warnock, still a very good player, and we've also got. I keep losing players. Where do they keep going? Um, Marcus Olsen, there he is. Um, so again, very similarly matched types of players. Stephen Warnock and Marcus Olsen. Arguably Marcus Olsen slightly better uh, technically. Definitely better physically. But Stephen Warnock has a huge advantage mentally. He's a very experienced player, as I said. Played for the likes of Leeds United. Where else he's been? Aston Villa, Blackburn. Kind of been all over the place. Liverpool as well, of course, where he started his career. I actually forgot he played for Liverpool. There you go. Um, but yeah, he's been around the block quite a while and he's found a home in Derby he's been here quite a few seasons well a couple of seasons now not done too badly at all so definitely a good option for us but Marcus Olsen is going to be our main left back this season just bags of pace 
maybe could do with being a bit better mentally, but he will develop still. He's only 27 years old, but physically a really impressive specimen, so hopefully he can do a job down that left-hand side. I just realise I've still got injured players unavailable, so we do also have Cyrus Christie at right back, who probably would come in ahead of Chris Baird. We'll quickly compare them. There he is. But still, again, you see Chris Baird very competitive still, even while he's 33. Cyrus Christie only 22, so again, plenty of time to develop. And I think that's what a lot of this squad is about. A lot of them are players who have lots of time to develop. We've got some really experienced heads in there, but we've also got some really good youngsters coming through, hopefully, who can start taking their place in the next few seasons. Now, central defence is an area I am looking to strengthen. We've actually only got three central defenders at the moment. Natural centre-backs. A couple of the other players can play centre-back as well, but natural centre-backs. We've only got these three. So we're going to start with Jason Shackle, who is our main defender. Of course, joined from Burnley, I believe, last season. I'll double-check. Yeah, he's joined... Oh, this season, even. Um, didn't have the best first game, but we won't talk about that. Um, and our other main centre-back would be Richard Keogh, who, is, of course, is our captain. As you can see, very evenly matched, actually. Um, surprisingly so, perhaps, but technically, mentally, physically, it's kind of a bit of a mixed match of, of which one takes the advantage. In fact, if we look at the uh, nice little, uh, I don't even know what you call this, graph. Let's call it a graph. There we go. Um, very evenly matched. Richard Keogh better at attacking, while Jason Shackle's better at defending at the top. You see, just very evenly matched, which is good to see. I would ra much rather see two players being evenly matched than one being really strong in one area, but really weak in another so good to see and our other centre back is Jake Buxton who has been here quite a while I believe yeah since 2009 um, I, I think he had an in, quite a serious injury last season if I'm remembering correctly I might be making that up uh, yeah I am making that up okay um, but yeah just again a decent centre back maybe could do with a bit of strengthening very good mentally though not a lot of pace, which is a theme with our central defenders. Not very pacey, which could 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 cost us quite quite badly uh, later on in the in the save. But for now, I'm happy with what we've got. So we have got a lot of central midfielders, as you see. So I'm probably going to skip them for now and come back to them in a bit once we've talked through other positions. Uh, so the right wing is quite a strong one with Tom Ince there, the ex-Hull player, started his career at Liverpool, if I remember correctly. Had those amazing seasons at Blackpool where they got into the Premier League and everyone absolutely loved them. Um, Moved to Crystal Palace as well on loan. Played for Hull. Nottingham Forest on loan. Uh, he was on loan at Derby last season. Did really well. He's coming now permanently. So really happy to have him in the squad. We'll just get um, Timmy Elsink. El Elsnick, I believe that's how you pronounce it. I'm not quite sure. I'm sorry. Um, but he's our younger option there. But as you see, he's still quite impressive. Very good heading for a right midfielder. Good aggression as well. Pretty good mentals there. Tom Ince, though. Obviously the best player. Technically really superb Tom Ince. Dribbling 16. Crossing 14. Really good finishing as well. Which is helpful on that right hand side. Maybe could do with some work on his passing. But you know, apart from that he looks really really impressive. Not as quick as you might expect. But that may develop as he gets a bit older. But maybe you would expect a bit more pace from Tom Ince. But I think he's still going to be a really good option for us. In that right midfield role. Left midfield we are again very strong. Um, with Abdul Kamara. Just again. Just pace, unlike, well, I'm saying it as well, but unlike Tom Ince, he's more about his pace than he is about his technical attributes, as you see. 17 and 17 for pace and acceleration. Dribbling only 13, though, crossing 12. Passing's decent, though, which is what I like to see from the wingers. I like wingers who can also pay it, play it along the ball. Got along the ball, along the ground, even. Got really good determination as well, which is nice. Uh, maybe could do with a bit more work mentally. He's 25 years old, so he's a bit older than Tom Ince, but I think he's going to be really good for us on that left hand side with that pace. He's going to prove a threat to other teams. We've also got Nick Blackman and Johnny Russell. We'll compare the two of them. If I can... Eh, why, why are you doing that? Compare with... Where is he? You'll probably, you can probably see him already and are just screaming at me in the comments. I know you are, but... Just, just give me a second. Nick Blackman, there he is. Nick Blackman, of course, can play also plays a striker. Um, both of these quite pacey. Nick Blackman's got the edge on the pace, but... Um, Johnny Russell's definitely got the mental advantage, technically as well, a bit better. Um, so they're both they're both not the best options you could possibly have, but they will do a job when we need them. They're only two star current ability. Uh, well, Nick Blackman's only one and a half star, but I think he can do a job uh, anywhere on the pitch in those attacking areas. So they're good they're good options to have. We've also got Ivan Calero, who's a bit of a younger option. He is wanted, I believe, on loan by a couple of clubs, but. 
I mean, he's 20 years old. I don't think he's going to develop much more than he's at now. I mean, this is saying he could be a sort of a two and a half star to three and a half star potential. But to be honest, I don't see him developing that well. But we've brought him into the first team just to give him some game time. Hopefully, see if he can develop a bit further and then sell him on for quite a decent profit. So we'll we'll look to be doing that later on. Now, the striking option is where I'm really excited to see where this team develops. We've got Chris Martin and we've got Darren Bent. Chris Martin's going to be our main striker. But we'll just look at Darren Bent as well. As you see, Chris Martin, very impressive player indeed. 16 finishing, which is always nice. 14 first touch. Heading of 13, which isn't too bad at all. Good passing as well. Uh, good penalty taking. Mentally, he's got good aggression, which is always helpful for a, a lone striker, which is what he's going to be. He's got good bravery, composure, determination, flair. Off the ball, Darren Bent's got a good off the ball as well, which is nice to see. But physically, is though where the main difference between them comes out. As you see, Darren Bent's got more more pace than Chris Martin, so he's really are more of a poacher than anything else. Whereas Chris Martin's a bit more of an advance forward, a bit more of a hold it up for the for the uh, other players coming in. Also, Darren Bent on a lot of money, so he may not last too long in this squad, to be honest, because I don't like that huge wage. Uh, we've also got Kwabe Thomas, 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 Tom Thomas. Why did I struggle to say Thomas? Uh, similar to Ivan Calero, he's 19 years old. I don't think he's going to develop as much as the, the potential abilities perhaps saying. I think we may be looking to loan him out a bit bit closer to the time. But, you know, not too bad a player, but I don't think he's ever going to be anything special for us. So, likely, more likely than not, he will leave the club um, in the next few years. Also on the right wing, I forgot to mention these two. We've got Andy Vyman and Craig Forsyth, who are naturally a bit deeper but they can play in these advanced uh, winger also we'll look at Andy Weiman of course the ex-Aston Villa player I believe he started his career well he started as uh, Rapid VM but he moved to Aston Villa very early in his career had a good few seasons with them maybe not everyone's favourite player but he was a very direct player quite a quite an important impact player for them as you see again pace to burn um, for this level good stamina as well which is always nice technically and mentally maybe not too impressive at this stage but I think he can do a job when called upon he is also natural as a striker which is useful to have that flexibility and Craig Forsyth who it says naturally is a fullback but he can also play on the wing or wing back which will be very useful because there is a tactic I'm looking to try which may inv involve wing back but if you look at the attributes for the wingers got good crossing dribbling first touch passing is really good technique is good overall a very good player not an exceptional player but he can definitely do a job for us when called upon not quite sure what his career has been like. Started at Dundee, moved to Watford, Bradford City and then Derby. Uh, well, he was on loan at Bradford and Derby and then came to us on a free transfer. A couple of seasons ago, played pretty much regularly for them. For them, for us even. I've taken charge now, I keep forgetting that. Um, but yeah, I think again, he's going to be a really good option for us. So now we'll move into the very packed midfield role. We maybe have too many midfielders, to be honest. Craig Bryson is out injured for a couple of months, as is, of course, Will Hughes. We'll talk about Will Hughes in a second. Actually, we'll start with the defensive midfielders. Um, they can both play midfield as well, but because they're a different position, we'll have a look at them. So I showed you Jordan Rister uh, last episode. Will Hughes, unfortunately, is still out for six to eight months, and his attributes are going to decrease, but I still think he's going to be an exceptional talent once he's back. I'm really looking forward to hopefully taking him into the Premier League where I think he belongs. We are going to try and retrain his position once he's back fit. I'll Again, I'll talk about that another time. But we'll just compare him with Jordan Rossiter for now because they are two, what they say, natural defensive midfielders. Very different types of players, really, though. Jordan Rossiter, more about the defensive element than the attacking element. As you see, Will Hughes at the moment, bit of a better player, but he has got age on his side. So for an 18-year-old, Jordan Rossiter looks really impressive. Hopefully he can develop quite a lot at this club, but we'll have to wait and see. If we could get him on permanently after a loan, that would be fantastic, because his mentals are really good for an 18-year-old, as I mentioned last episode. Both could do it with a bit of work physically, but obviously we can't really do much with Will Hughes until he's back fit. So those are our two defensive midfielders. Now our main midfielders are going to be Jeff Hendrick as our roaming playmaker. I think someone else just said they were natural as a roaming playmaker as well. Yeah, Craig Bryson when he's back fit, but for now we'll compare him to Bradley Johnson who came in from Norwich. As you see, Bradley Johnson looking very impressive. He didn't play the first game because he wasn't quite fit, as I showed you. Um, but he will probably come into that role ahead of Jeff Hendrick, perhaps. We'll have to wait and see how the tactic works out. But Very impressive stats from both of them, really. Very good midfielders for this level. Maybe arguably Premier League midfield quality, but hopefully that's where we can take them, so we'll have to wait and see. We've then got George uh, Thorne and Jacob Butterfield. I'll show you both of them. 
These two, although it says playmakers, they are going to be our more defensive midfielders. As you see, tackling is not bad for either of them. We are going to be working on that. Marking can do with a lot of work, but we're going to try and mould them into all-round midfielders, but mainly ball winners. Um, we saw last episode they, did, they actually did a very impressive job in that role, despite not being very natural at it. So, again, very good quality midfielders. A central midfielder is definitely our strongest area in depth. Perhaps we have better players elsewhere, but in terms of depth, that midfielder area is very strong. We've also got Jamie Hansen, who's got a bit of potential, and I actually like the look of him. I think he's got some really good stats there, especially the likes of passing, uh, long shots, technique. Got good vision and teamwork, which is always helpful for a young player. Free kick taking as well as just an added bonus. Maybe he can get a couple of goals. He may go out on loan again, just to give him some experience. I believe he started his career with us. Yes, he did. A couple of games last season, actually, which is impressive to see. So that's the squad overall, to be honest. I'm not going to go into too much detail about anyone else. We'll just have a quick look to see if there's anyone in the under-18s, uh, under-21s that's particularly impressive. We do have Farad Rawson, who's, again, got some potential, who's out on loan at Rotherham at the moment. Not sure if he's going to get... He actually started the last game and had a very poor game, so that's a bit disappointing. We can't recall him either, which is a bit annoying, but... He looks like a really good prospect, to be honest. We've also got Mason Bennett, who's been around... Seems to have been around for ages, forever, basically. Since 2010, made quite a few appearances as a very young player, but... I'd, I'd argue his career seems to have stalled slightly, and his attributes are all over the place. We're actually going to move him... Oh, he's on loan at the moment at Burton. I, I completely forgot. I was going to say we'll move him into the first team, but he's on loan. Uh... Lots of pace, very good uh, physically, but apart from that, needs to improve quite a lot. Um, or if I'll have a look at Mats Morch, I don't quite know how you'd pronounce that. 21 years old, goalkeeper. Again, probably going to leave the club quite soon. I don't think he's going to develop too much. And the under-18s, a couple of players from the, reserve, from the first team game match fitness, so not really anything impressive in the under-18s. The highest rated is this Kyron Stabani, a right-back doesn't look too bad, but I don't see him becoming anything special. We'll have to wait and see. We may bring him in to the first team later on. Um, so I think that's pretty much all we're going to go through. I just wanted to talk through the squad, introduce you to the players, let you know what sort of players we're going to be dealing with. Our finances, as I mentioned, are pretty decent. Maybe need to just keep an eye on that and not spend too much in this first season. I hope we get champion, uh, Champions League. hope we get Premier League football next season, which will really help boost our finances, but we'll have to wait and see. Um... Apart from that, not really too much I want to show you. Nothing really going on in terms of the board developments at the moment. So, we'll wait and see and I'll let you know if anything happens there. But for now, I'm going to wrap this episode up now. If you've enjoyed these first two episodes of this save, please do, do leave a like. It will definitely encourage me to keep on going with this save or I'll look for something else if people aren't enjoying it. But for now, thank you very much for watching. And if you I was going to say something there. I can't remember what I was going to say. Oh yeah, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. If you want to see more from the channel, please subscribe. And I will see you next time.